Scandinavian arms and Schmidt and Bender. <laughs> Bender, don't mind if I do. Sorry guys, I just couldn't help it. Now back on topic. Scandinavian Arms and Schmidt and Bender have teamed up and the result of their collaboration is this unique top tier competition scope which has just landed in the realm of the air rifle activities. This is my first high-end optical gun sight and I have to say the word excited is not nearly good enough to describe my feelings when this $2800 scope was delivered to me. My thanks to the guys at the Wolfie Group who were quick to answer all my questions regarding this gun sight and made sure the international shipping took no more than a week. So let's get started. It goes without saying that at this price tag everything screams quality, even the package itself. The LRS, which stands for Light Recoil Scope, comes neatly packed in those, let's call them foam scope mounts, so that it's not in contact with the box itself, thus ensuring extra safety during transportation. But by saying Light Recoil, Schmidt and Bender mean it's not rated for 50 BMG rifles, so as long as you don't mount the unit on one of those handheld flak cannons, you should be fine. The scope comes with a branded lens cleaning cloth, an additional little box which contains a short but comprehensive manual in many languages which I suggest you read, an Allen key which has Allen key written on it, thanks for letting us know Schmidt and Bender, we would have never guessed, some stickers if you fancy leaving blue marks on your gear, and perhaps most important of all, your warranty with a plastic card which you have to register on their website. And now the main event, the beautifully engineered and built scope itself. First let me say this thing is made in Germany and we all know what that means. It's in first focal plane, the length is 417 mm or almost 16 inches and a half. The front lens has a diameter of 56 mm. The tube is a 34mm one, which allows for more windage and elevation travel of the reticle and for extra light transmission. But those two specs are also the reason for the LRS to be a bit on the heavy side, at a little over 1100 grams or 2 pounds and a half. The magnification dial goes from 5 to 25 times zoom and it moves smoothly right out of the box, it doesn't need any breaking in like with some other scopes. And the same goes for the diopter adjustment dial too. As a matter of fact, it's the case with the parallax knob as well, which is something I particularly like. Nice and smooth, and for once in my life I have a mil mil scope that has a focusing dial in metrics too. There's none of that mil radian radical, mil radian turrets and parallax adjustment in yards nonsense. Now let's talk about turrets and turret tracking. My opinion is that the design of those is simple and efficient and very intuitive too. Check out the elevation turret. The first line of indications is in white, while the second one is in yellow. In the first rotation past your zero, the white numbers are the ones to designate your elevation. As soon as you complete the first full turn, the yellow numbers kick in and there's a yellow indicator that pops up at the top of the turret so that you always know exactly where you are while dialing for distance. The elevation turret has another feature that is quite unique and pretty useful at the same time. It's what SA call below zero. No matter where you adjust your zero stop, you always have one mil radian below it to allow for using different ammo loads, different suppressors, or as is the case with me quite often, to allow for shooting at an upward angle. On the windage turret there are the letters R and L to indicate in which direction you're adjusting your point of aim horizontally. The zero stop function. Let's say you've just zeroed in your gun at 10 mils on the elevation turret. In order to set the zero stop you need to loosen a couple of allen screws with the supplied allen key and know that it takes no more than one rotation of both to be able to lift the turret cap.
Then you replace it so that the zero line on the turret cap matches the triangle shaped marker and tighten the Allen screws again. As you can see, the 1mm radian below zero feature is still there. And the same simple operation goes for the windage turrets as well, of course. And now just listen to those clear and tactile clicks on the LRS. One more thing, there is no pull-up push-down locking function on the turrets of this scope. And now a quick and improvised turret tracking test, although I knew what the result would be even before I started. As you can see, the center of the crosshairs is leveled with that window's frame both vertically and horizontally, and I dialed exactly 48 clicks from the upper edge to that first line of the window blinds. If you care to count with me, you see, or perhaps I should say, you'll hear that it took precisely 48 clicks to go up to the initial position. Then I did the same thing horizontally, measuring the width of that window frame in the middle. 27 clicks both ways, no deviation. What follows is point of aim checks during magnification and focus shifts. And frankly, I'm beginning to wonder if I should have wasted your time and mine at all testing such things on a Schmidt and Bender scope. But I'll draw your attention to this little additional reticle to the right of the center of the crosshairs. Scandinavian arms claim that it facilitates the distance to target estimation, and I'm thinking that's why those tiny hash marks are only 0.1 mil radians away from each other. Next, I'd like to give you an idea of the clarity of the scope. That's a skyrod at 142 meters or 155 yards. The first video is at 60 frames per second and the second one is at 120. Both are full HD. Perhaps you notice a haze in the image every couple of seconds. That's due to the wind and the cold weather with warmer and colder waves taking turns in the gusts. I would also like to point out that the video is recorded with a GoPro Hero 7 black camera with an aftermarket lens and the excellent scope cam mount by Orion the Iguana Hunter. But great as this scope cam mount is, trust me when I say that it doesn't give justice to the true image quality of the LRS. I hope that's something you'll be able to see for yourselves one day. That dilapidated house is at 1030 meters and the next one is even further at 1250 meters or 1367 yards and you can even read the graffiti on the walls.
Up next, I mounted the LRS on my 9mm Edgun Leshy 2 and went outside for a quick shooting session. The projectiles of choice are the Edgun Diabolus 81 grain traveling at 785 feet per second and as is the case almost always here by me, the wind gusts were pretty strong at times. Before I get to the fun part, let me show you a couple of other items by Scandinavian Arms that I got from the Edgun shop. A range bag for my 6.8 liter carbon fiber tank and I gotta tell you this was a long time coming, now I can finally throw away that old sports bag that I used to carry my tank in. You can fit almost all 7 liter carbon fiber bottles in it, even mine with a valve that sticks out too much. Sturdy Cordura like fabric, a multitude of pockets. Some of them detachable. One of them even has what seems to be a cutout for your hose. And an additional lining on the points of contact with the ground or any other surface. I also got me a little something called a sparky hose, which to me is useful when testing new stuff with my guns so that I can keep my large tank attached to the rifle and move freely at the same time. Female foster connect on both ends, this thing is made in such a way that it resembles a piece of jewelry more than it resembles a tool. Working pressure of 300 bar of course. I set my spinner targets at 52 meters and my very first shot reminded me that the 9mm Leshy 2 means business. Second shot and the entire thing was down on the ground again. Being sick and tired of going back and forth, I took a third shot while the steel target was in contact with the ground and the result was a bent spinner which now I have to mend. To prevent that from happening again, I took the target at 100 yards, dealt my scope in for the new distance and started shooting again. And even though I failed to press the record button on my first shot, I managed to record the remaining 7 shots in the magazine. I trust you enjoyed my review of the Scandinavian Arms Schmidt & Bender LRS scope boys and girls, and if you did, just stay tuned and you'll see more of it soon.